when you're with uh, an individual where truth is revealed to them and that light bulb goes off and their eyes widen and you can just see it hit their soul. Welcome to the Hope and Hairspray podcast. I'm Rhody Kate. And I'm Kelly Osborne. Today, we will lead you on a journey of self-development and professional growth. You will be inspired to be the best version of who you were meant to be. Let's jump in. Hello, hello. Here we are on episode number eight. Super excited to bring you a topic that's called one in 33 million. Um, Sometimes this also gets the name of superpower. uh, And we're going to dive into that. Because one thing that we've experienced with our coaching clients is they don't particularly realize or acknowledge things they're good at. Right. Right. That we always start with truth about self when we're coaching a client and it is helping them pay attention to people when they say, wow, you're really good at that. I don't know where in our upbringing uh, that a lot of us put a shield up, right? Oh, gosh, I know. Like, we have a hard time with compliments, right? The so- answer is thank you. <laughs> You're kind. I had the best, my favorite boss ever in my life. I didn't have a lot of bosses. but <laughs> you are the She's boss. from Nashville, Tennessee, sweet Southern Belle lady. And her, she helped me learn this I mean, 20 years ago, probably, is your kind. Yeah. Like literally to accept a compliment. Because mm-hmm. if you think about it, it's almost kind of rude when you Dis- don't. When you discount what they've, you've basically discounted what they said. Right. And says you don't value the words coming out of their mouth. Right. Like. Think about it. You would never want to do that, Mm-mm. but but we do do that when we do that. So our title, One in 33 Million, explain where that comes from. Well, that is um, obviously, if you've been listening, um, Clifton Strengths, where we're both certified in that from, from Gallup. And we really, it's all focused on our natural talents that we have and how do we grow those natural talents into strengths and that journey that we're on so that we do that. One in 33 million is the number um, is how often those exact strengths of your top five show up in someone else, which just says we're unique, like a snowflake, right? One in 33 million. So incredible. Yeah. So we're unique. You have unique talents and not only are the talents, but it's the combination of talents too and how they fit together. And so, you know, I just, I don't know if we, we wake up every day and go, I'm unique, like a snowflake, and isn't that great? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not that far. I'm going to do that but tomorrow. But to know it, I'm okay, gonna wake you up. do I'm that. Gonna do that tomorrow. I'll let you know. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty little uh, snowflake. Yeah. Sounds like something we would say never. <laughs> but well, the concept. Yeah, the concept's important. <laughs> right. So when we, um, another thing that we start to work with people, when they haven't had their Clifton strength. Right. So this is a super easy episode to listen to when you have no Clifton Strengths background. Right, right, super right, easy. Right. So it's paying attention to what you naturally do well. Yeah. And what things do you naturally do well that you're not placing value on? Right. Really, when we discount a compliment, when we um, have taught ourselves. Um, not to be, because we it was a sign of being prideful. Maybe mm-hmm. um, when you list out the things you're good at, we're not we're not saying broadcast it. It doesn't need to be something, but it's something you yourself need to know the truth about yourself. Absolutely, what you're good at. There's value in your talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my personal mission statements is to reveal the gifts to others and encourage them so much that they too begin to believe it, right? right? You were put here on this earth to do something better than anybody before you or anybody after you. And that's it's one of our missions is to just help women uncover the truth about themselves, the good truth about themselves, their talents, their strengths, um, that does deserve value from others. And I think we 
when you talk, when you, every time you say, say it again, bef- um, no one before you or after you say that sentence. Again, Nobody really. before you or after you is going to be able to do the precise thing that you were put here to do. You'll do it better than anybody before or after you. And it doesn't mean that you're going to discover a mountain or you're going to, you know, invent something or cure. cure, Yeah, 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 right. You're not going to cure polio, things like that. But it is a, a combination that shows up in you in a way that nobody else can do. And you do it naturally. You do it gracefully. You do it out of flow. And people appreciate it. Right. I think what happens is let's talk about like the little girl who's in class and she gets a report card. We just talked about this just oh. with, with a couple of um, women earlier, um, which was, uh, what did it always say? She, what did she, she said it really nicely. She's like, uh, she shares with her neighbors too much. Was that what she said? I can remember. Yeah. yeah so she on her report much. card, mm-hmm. she got um, talks too much. Yeah. Right. So in her view, since she was a little girl, she's been told you talk too much. I got that. All the time. Your high communication. Did you get that as um, well? I, oddly, I'm not sure. Okay. But I was super quiet. I know. You're not going to believe this. And I was not a loud talker. <laughs> Josh, our producer, is going, what? <laughs> but no. When I, Who are you? <laughs> exactly. Um, in the seventh grade, we tried out like for cheerleader. And I was the first person to go. And we were on stage. And then there's that first row on stage. They could not hear me. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I know. And I, okay. Yeah. So I think. Okay. So maybe you didn't get yeah, that comment on your report but card. I, I right. probably did later, but like in the seventh grade, I didn't. But things like that, those negative comments of, um, oh, you'll never, you'll never amount to anything, or you're a busybody, or mm-hmm. you're like those things that get a negative attachment. Right. That sometimes that, the truth, the, the just genuine spotlight truth needs to be, uh, to just shine on that, right? Where they can, oh, wow, you actually have this talent and it can be used Mm -hmm. beneficially. And for her, it was, yes, you talk a lot. You talk well, you communicate when, when, when people need, when two people need to connect, you can be that third person that connects them or you can explain things really well. But, you know, it just, um, I've heard that one a ton because, you know, it's pretty typical on your little report card when you're good citizenship or whatever. They, I don't mm-hmm. I'm old. <laughs> I don't know you're just learning it. Um, I've heard of kids. Uh, oh, they must have ADHD. And, and for some, that could be definitely yeah. true. But they might have had, um, in the case of, of one that I have, um, high ideation. They, they just have a ton of ideas popcorning in their brain all mm-hmm. the time, right? Like, is it truly a deficit? Is it a weakness or is it a strength in disguise? And we're going to give you some things that you can ask yourself that um, it's five questions. It's called the five clues to talent. And we're going to kind of sort through those and give you kind of our take on that. Uh, This is a great thing to do with your team, with your circle, with your kids, um, with your family members, Great thing to know to just start the truthful conversations um, and be okay to accept, oh, wow, like it's okay. It is okay to say you're good at something, right? right? If it's, if you're using it to benefit others, I'll be the, I'll be the first one to stand up and applaud you. So absolutely. So the first question on five clues to talent is what kind of things are you naturally drawn towards? So when that question first surfaced for you, were there any things that anything that popped into your mind or even just now things that you're naturally drawn to? Are you drawn towards, um, problem solving? Are you drawn towards, um, helping people? Like what would it be for you, Rodi? I think I'm definitely drawn to create creative things. I like to build and create things, but also ideas. And so, um, what's interesting is I'm not only drawn to them. So therefore I actually value them. I am high in ideation. This was before I knew any of that, what that even meant. What does that mean? It just means that it's a natural talent. Um, but I, so what I looked like as a leader 15 years ago uh, would be more like, what a great idea. Like I, I, 
ex- or thanked people or rewarded people or complimented people when they had ideas. Man, kind of good, bad, or indifferent to me. It's just an idea. We can we can you know spin off of that. So certainly, um, mine was 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 officially was ideas, and it took me a bit. Then when I was like ideation, oh that makes sense. Oh, oh. yeah. I oh. I'm high in that. But I realized when I looked back that I really rewarded those people that had those ideas because it excited me. And I had to learn that, hey, you got to appreciate people that don't, right? That's another side. But for me, it was definitely ideation. What about for you? What did you? Um... So things I was naturally drawn towards uh, are multiple things. Like mm. I love to have many things going on at the <laughs> same time. Oh my gosh. And I used so to say, of- I used to say, I take multi-serious, multitasking so seriously. I had two babies at the same time. Yes, that's <laughs> like right. now we've kind of been debunking. Uh, we have debunked that, that but multitasking love- isn't really a thing. But I, it's just, it's very simple for me. In fact, when we were, gosh, I don't know, maybe five years ago, looking at a change uh, with companies and and what we did, my husband's like, just make sure you own more than one. Because he knows if I just have one, um, it, I kind of get bored. Yeah. Right. There's got to be. Um, so I have a strength in Clifton Strengths World. It's called a ranger. So we kind of love the challenge of organized chaos. Um, and we won't jump in until there. Um, there's the need to jump in, <laughs> right there. Um, if there's just one dish in the sink, okay, no, that doesn't apply to me. That does not <laughs> apply to you. She is. You're just like okay. a, talk about a hover. Yeah. Ooh, dish, dish, dish. I, 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 my, my Indian name, yeah, is I walk with hot pads. So I will just <laughs> pick things up and put things away without yeah. knowing. But back to a ranger. I love to have a lot of things going on. We are perpetual perpetual procrastinators we can because we'll just keep putting it off until it requires adrenaline to do right right. <laughs> right. so that's kind of things that i'm naturally drawn towards um i love fires yeah G- give me give me some chaos on a normal day and um it doesn't wipe me out i think having twins probably helped you then because mm-hmm. i can't imagine like Two at a time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be that would be it would be good for you. It was a good match. It was great. It yeah, win win. Yeah, I it was fantastic. Um, and I ha- had an older son too, so it was nice. We could kind of tag team, and yeah. so it made it nice. Thanks for listening to this episode. We would love to invite you to an experiential in-person event called our Women's Sabbatical Getaways. This year, we're going to Ludington, Michigan, Dallas, Texas, and Seattle, Washington. If you want more information, you can go to our website at hopeandhairspray.com, click on sabbaticals, and fill out the interest form. We would love to see you there. Let's jump back in. So the next question on Five Clues to Talent is what kind of activities do you pick up quickly? Mm. Like some people are like, oh, math, it's easy for me. You were saying, oh, gosh, give me the numbers again. (laughs) Right. On our last episode, you were talking about math, not. But paying attention to things that, remember, reduce the barrier. (laughs) Like, oh, my gosh, doesn't everybody do that? Yeah. Uh, The answer is probably no. Not everybody does that. But mm-hmm. what do you naturally, what type of activities do you just pick up quickly? So interesting, it's, I don't know if it's an activity I pick up quickly. I think I'm going to say thing. the wrong thing. Well, I was thinking what I do well. This is not really the same thing. Um, activity wise, I would say that I sort of f- follow the flow and the plan pretty easily. Like if someone's talking about big picture and they're laying it out, I can see sort of the... Um, you know, what's happening and what's, what's, what could happen next. So that sort of big picture strategy type thing, I pick up on that. I also probably pick up on, um, from a communication perspective, the nuances on in something that's going on. Like they're not really activities. I think I'm answering the question wrong. That's no, I don't yeah. think so. Okay, I good. don't think so at good. all. Yeah. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. And and you may have this when you go through these five clues mm-hmm. of talent and you start asking yourself these questions, there's not a right or wrong way to answer yeah. it. It's it's lowering the veil <laughs> and starting to focus on what you do do well, 
right? Like pay attention to that and it's okay to do that. So what about for you? What kind of activities? Activities. Um, again, I like a lot of things going on um, at once, but also activities that I pick up well. Um, hmm. I would say um, hospitality. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like that's hospitality steps mm-hmm. yep. are natural for me. Um, mm-hmm. Being thoughtful mm-hmm. about like my husband. <laughs> I love him so much. But he was like, oh, so let me just throw this item in a bag for somebody. And I'm like, oh, um, hold on. You can't do that. <laughs> you need to look at the bag. Is the bag like what that person resembles that person or would like that person be like? Or he's like, wow. And I'm like, oh, you didn't think of that? Because nope. it was a gift, <laughs> it was right? A yeah. Gift. Yeah. So I'm giving a gift to somebody and you, and you had to bag. pick out a bag. And I'm like, well, it's this person and they like golf. So um, a green bag would work for that. And he's like, yeah, there's no part of me that would go with that level of detail. <laughs> Yeah, I get we're it. Just, we'll just we'll be yeah. just happy if he put it in a gift bag, right? Right, right. So activity wise, yeah. But that thoughtful care, those are things that I just I that's easy for me. Yeah. That type of activity, um, thinking about gift giving. Yeah. Maybe that's a. I think for me, it was I would say an activity. I know a people activity, like anything around people, groups of people, um, an activity where you have to. It's like hospitality. It's my version of hospitality because I'm includer, which is high, which means I, you know, like people to feel included. I'm, uh, you know, D and I was, you know, I was doing that when I was six years old and I saw that little person being by themselves. I would go talk to them apparently. So I was quiet one-on-one, but, um, I mean, I was quiet, but one-on-one I would talk. So I would go and I would make them feel included or I invite them over to do, you know, hey, let's, you know, build this whatever Lego thing. I don't know what we did when we were little. But so anything around people, absolutely. I love Those are that. My activities. And paying attention to these, it's super fun too because your strengths are set by age four. I know. Isn't that crazy? Four years old. So your natural talents, you, they're in who you are at the age four. Yeah. And it's fun when you like... I know that you have a grand baby, babies, Couple, four, and I yeah. four on the way. And I have a grand. Um, I've got two grand nephews and a grand niece. And seeing them at that early age where they start doing things, you're like, oh, interesting. Look how they're picking that up, or or or, or doing something with that thing, or or um, you know, playing with it, or whatever. It's just kind of fun to see. So the lie that I don't have any. <laughs> yep, you've had them. Mm-hmm. You've had them from a very very young age. Absolutely. Um, so when that leads us to the next question, what things do you automatically know the steps to be taken? And I see this in you. Okay, great. Um, with strategy. Oh, so yeah. Rhody is um, AKA Kelly's brain vacuum. Yep. So she sucks knowledge out of my head and she automatically knows the steps. And it just blows my mind that you're like, we, but we didn't, we didn't put this step in, and my arranger would be like, just get there and we figure it out. And right. that's not always good. I can def- definitely exasperate people by not having the right steps in order. Um, and having, on and, and the other hand, always having the right steps and not just jumping in sometimes, you know, it's not good to do something the same way all the time, right? There's there's value for for um, in a different situation, maybe. Act. So it's not, <laughs> the, the strategy gets in my way too, like, like you're saying. Um, just your activator might might get in your way. Yeah. So your planned spontaneity versus my spontaneity. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, I think fly people, by the seat of my pants. <laughs> I think people underestimate the words planned spontaneity. I think no one is really thinking. I think that's that. called an oxymoron. Right? <laughs> maybe, maybe. But it works in my family. It makes my husband pr- happy because you, know, you know your I, husband does love. Yeah, he does love that. Yeah. So, so if if it's not natural, I love that. Well, if it's so not it's, natural for me, so I have to right. it's important to someone I love yep so I can try um to with, in my world like so my world is the with planned your part. strengths right. exactly. yeah that doesn't mean he knows that you planned it <laughs> I try not to tell him because it's just it's right. just not the same effect right. <laughs> and I but, love that I absolutely love but that now he you. knows so thanks yeah. <laughs> Now he knows. Maybe I'll just hide this 
podcast or how do you hide yeah. a podcast? Josh, how do I hide a podcast? I don't know. Tell me how. You know, like on social media, can't yeah. you block? Yeah. That's like something. if you're selling something on Facebook Marketplace like yeah. that, like don't show my friends because uh, maybe oh, they got oh, it for okay, me. Okay. Right? I can work that. Work that out. So. I'm sure there's something. So the next one is. Wait, what was that for you? Uh, do I have a question? I have so bad. Some question. Um, things I automatically know the steps to be taken. Uh, maybe it's in business. Um, it just mm-hmm. makes sense for me to line up um, steps that need to be taken. Uh, maybe even just as a leader, as a business leader, when I'm meeting with my staff. Okay, f- my favorite mantra in business is first things first. Yeah. So I know what the base steps right. are. Like we have to do this first. And also when there's chaos, Okay, we have like during the LPGA, we put together 40,000 servings of food, right? But that doesn't mean we need to focus on day 10. Right. We need to focus on day one right now. So I can focus on those steps that need to be taken. And my high communication helps me communicate that right. with my team. And also there's some peace that comes with that. Oh, Great. You know the steps that need to be taken. I don't need to know what they are, right. but you know them and you're going to tell me what I need to do. Yeah. So yeah. it just kind of helps with chaos, I think. Absolutely. It's also a good book and a good habit, first things first. Go ahead. Absolutely. So <laughs> number five, okay. clue number, or sorry, clue number four in the five clues to talent. Do you ever have moments where you say, how did I do that? Where you literally are like, not when you're driving and how did I get there? Like, that's not, yeah. that's not something that we want you to say, no. <laughs> but it's but when I, you get we, done with something and it was so natural for you, yeah. you literally wonder how you accomplished it with such ease. You know, um, I don't have a lot of examples like they're coming to my head. Um, I, I probably should have prepared a little bit more, but um, I think about early in my career. So I was a not-for-profit and then I went into a corporate learning. And that first job, like I think people don't realize, like that was a huge job for someone at, you know, my experience level. It was my first corporate gig. It was my first full learning, although I had done a lot of learning um, in in the not-for-profit aspect. But I look back and and I'm like, I don't know how I did that. Uh, it, and, well, and now I guess I do because my boss at the time told me, I even went back and said, why did you hire me? I mean, seriously. And what she said was, I saw that you understood the basics and that I was a kind of a purist when it came to learning like, how someone learns, how they develop, what someone needs to see on paper. Because at that time, I wasn't standing in front of people. I had gone from being in front of people to talk to them to developing things and never seeing the whites of their eyes, which I did learn that I missed, but I was able to develop learning systems, learning environments uh, for people on the other side of the world that, you know, in different languages that they would, you know, teach someone what they needed to do on the line or the back of house or something like that or or customer service. Um, I look back now and I just, you know, I kind of wonder how I did it. But I realize now that it was my some of my, my natural talents, right? My natural strengths, the things that I did. And then it's the way I look at something and break it down simply, right? I I know I tell you, you know, I, I wrote a lot at the third grade level. You're supposed to write newspapers or written at like the fifth grade or eighth grade level. I think it's a fifth, eight, one of those two. Um, and but I like even break it simple. I want people around the world to be able to understand whatever this concept is. And so I think that's kind of one of the reasons it worked. But yeah, I look back and just go, wow, it was it was a lot. It was a lot of it's a big job, a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I did it, but I did. And I loved it. So, and somebody that is in your circle, right, then I can see just thinking, oh my gosh, you were born in Southeast Asia. You had international running through you. So you yeah. already had That's that true. desire. Like yeah. you love inter- the international world. Yeah. And to then combine that with your right. ability to create material, facilitate, teach, I mean, to me, it just seems like yeah. a natural lineup. Like, yeah, and I, so many times I was in a country where I didn't speak the language and I didn't understand it, and uh, yet we could communicate. And that's my actually one of my favorite things to do is like to not be able to speak a language, and yet you get what you need, they get what they need, and you move on. And I think a lot of the traveling that I did when I was you know younger and in my teens, and especially in Japan, because 
not at all simple um, or similar. And uh, we were just able to to draw, to point, to just, you know, and it's just like there's, you take a step back and just really kind of feel them and, and really observe. Yeah. I love that. I do too. I miss that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Maybe we will. Yeah, maybe we will. <laughs> so in moments where I saw that question of how did I do that, um, sometimes I have to think about when somebody actually said that to me. Okay. Like, how did you do that? Um, because sometimes when we do something so naturally, we don't even see what we did. We just had that recently. Um, we just got done with an amazing women's sabbatical getaway with a group of executive women, and we asked them to list their achievements. Mm. And one of our guests um, struggled with that because um, they it was her job. Like she so was like, just doing duh. her job right. and she didn't list it as an achievement. And it was so powerful to go around then the table and let the other women pour into her of, oh my gosh, but look at this. It, why is that not on your list, right? So sometimes when you do it naturally or you just think it's your job, right? Of there, course, I'm supposed to do this. Why, why, I mean, it's yeah, an every, obligation. everybody does that or, yeah. Mm -hmm. So really just framing that lens of when somebody says, how did you do that? Or, because it may not be you, that's where sometimes, sometimes people can struggle with this question of when has somebody asked you, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. um, mine is probably putting teams together. Yeah. Like I love, oh gosh, I would, I would hang out in that arena all day long is figuring out how the different talents can come together. But also I have a background in sociology. So um, that science of a team, yep. when they come together and they form, um, there's also going to be a phase uh, down the road called storm where things are tough and but trust the process. We talked right. about that um, on our last episode. But it is when they perform, when they come together. So I know the end and it's it's easy for me to go through that. But some of our team will be like, how, how did you do that? Um, but there's a lot of trust in there. So I think um, one of the things that helps me, um, how did you do that, is I can garner trust. Right. Um, sometimes it's Pied Piper, which comes a lot of responsibility with that. Right. Uh, but it's paying attention. Pay attention to what other people say. How did you do I that? that. So our last question, question number five and five clues of talent. What things fill you up and immediately when you're done, you wonder when you can do it again. Yeah. Um, you can do them when you're tired, when you are hungry, when you've already worked a 12 hour shift. Yep. Like it, it could be a hobby too. Like yes. don't discount yes. hobbies and yep. free time. And um, some people are runners, right? Like when they, they're just like, oh, it's just amazing. It fills me up because we want to help you move towards a life. Um, where you get more filled up, right? Because we're funnel shaped. We'll, right. we'll have to talk about that. That's, that's a good one. That's we'll do a, that. We'll later. do another one. Yeah, we don't have time. But we've got to stay filled up, mm -hmm. right? So, what are the things for you that just fill your cup? Well, you just said it. Like women's sabbatical getaways, <sighs> just interacting with women and helping. I mean, I think our job. I mean, we come down to what we do. We provide. The, the journey and the tools for women to be and learn how they can be the best version of themselves and creating and holding that space, right, all day long. I mean, and, and kind of on every level. Obviously, right now, we're, we're definitely, this about the women's sabbatical, but I'm, I'm like that with any kind of situation where I can really hold space for someone so that they have those aha moments. Uh, I mean, I can be exhausted, and that second and third wind will just pop in. Is that right? Is that right? Second wind? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, third yeah. Wind, I just, fourth yeah. wind. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I can do, yeah, I can do it for days on end and, and late into the night, mm -hmm. which is what happens when putting on a sabbatical. We do go kind of late. Yeah, yeah. We're late and then we're doing things behind the scenes late and then we're waking up early. And you know, I don't love to do that. And I can pop, I pop up really fast. I'm Super like, yep, easy. Easy. What yeah. about you? I would have to say the same. Yeah. Um, and even, I don't have the strength of relater. So that one on one. Um, I have more of the woo big groups. Yeah. But when you're with 
uh, an individual where truth is revealed to them and that light bulb goes off and their eyes widen and you can just see it hit their soul, Mm -hmm. right? It just goes deep down into their heart and they got there. Yeah. We, we are facilitators. Make it easier for them. Which means mm-hmm. to make easier. We are simply a guide. And I think both of us could guide all day, every day, days on end. Yeah. Right? It's so impactful to see um, women realize the truth about themselves, um, to erase the lies, even the lies about a talent they had mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. or a misperception or to not own it. Right. Or to not place any value on it. Yeah, that one hurts. Like w- our mission is to be truthful with women, right? Um, and let them be who they were created to be, so they have opportunities to do what they do best every day. So we always have a takeaway. Yeah, I think this takeaway is actually the whole. Mm-hmm. As any one it's of those five, episode. Mm-hmm. any one of those five questions. It's yeah. you know, ask yourself, get in a quiet place, journal, ask other people, but um, maybe make it a journey and you know, take a question a, a week, a day, whatever you need to do. Uh, although I did, someone in our last sabbatical, she said the value really was stopping and putting like hours together where you're focused on one thing versus like, I'll do this one week and then I'll do this the next week. Hers was getting away and disconnecting for two weeks or two days, oh, two weeks. That would be brilliant. Oh, Ooh. okay. Not that. that would be, we'd be, I think we'd be oh. world peace or something yeah. if we did that. Let, let it be days. somewhere warm. Yeah. But, <laughs> right. Amen. Um, so the idea of like the two days and it's, you're just focused on yourself. You're going deep on these things. So um, I'd say any one of those five questions, grab that and just um, ask yourself, ask other people. Absolutely. Spend some time with it. Wonderful. So one in 33 million, five clues to talent. Take time to discover your talent and we'll see you next time.